Hey guys. Welcome, folks. We'll get going here in a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> usually we start about five, or actually probably in about a minute. We usually start about five after, and Frederick has laryngitis today, and so sadly won't be able to lead us and has asked us if I'll stand in. <clears throat> I've gone ahead and put the link in the chat for the um, Meeting minutes, if folks could go ahead and add themselves to the attendee list, that would be fantastic. Can folks hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Okay. Yeah, we do. Cool. Yeah, there's always that uncomfortable moment when you start talking on a call and everyone is being politely quiet and you're just really not sure if you're being heard. All right, thank you for sharing. I appreciate the person sharing the agenda. <clears throat> and it's five after, so let's go ahead and dive in. Um, so again, please add yourselves to the meeting attendees list and we'll drive into the agenda. Um, so we, we do have this recurring uh, meeting, which you can get to on the community page. In addition, uh, the CNCF Telco, um, your tug, also is a group that we work closely with. And we should probably take a look at the CNCF networking working group that's currently being rebooted. So major upcoming events. Um, this actually is now a past event, the October 2nd webinar. Uh, I, I know that we've been tweeting about that and pointing people to the video. It went very, very well. It was extremely well received. But I'm gonna go ahead and release that since it's no longer an upcoming, remove that since it's no longer an upcoming event. Um, we also have coming up the Open Source Summit in Lyon, France, <clears throat> and uh, Ivana and Radoslav will be talking there, presenting an introduction to NSM. Um, and there's also a, a telco introduction to NSM. Um, coming up November 18th to the 21st, that's Kubernetes uh, KubeCon. Uh, we do have a talk on the main stage there for five cool things you could do with network service mesh. In addition, NSMCon is there. Um, you should go ahead and please add that to your KubeCon registration. Um, we do, you do need to actually be registered and it is filling up very, very fast. Um, and we have quite an impressive lineup of NSM related talks. So strongly encourage folks to register for that. Um, and then coming up in March, um, KubeCon plus CloudNativeCon Europe is coming up in Amsterdam. The CFP is currently open. It closes November 22nd, although they've now updated that to December 4th, which strikes me as wise. Closing your CFP in the middle of your running conference is probably the, not, not the greatest thing in the world. Uh, I heard that they have moved that. Ah, yes, yes, it was updated, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm sure someone did some very sane calculations to arrive at the 22nd and then people realized, oh wait, um, <laughs> that's the yeah, Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's not the best choice. Mm -hmm. okay. And then uh, Taylor has actually put together um, a CFP list if folks would like to be listed there. And then one of the other things that we will commonly do uh, for CFPs for things like KubeCon is we'll often put together a Google Doc that the community can collaborate on for crafting a series of proposals to go in. Yeah, obviously you don't have to participate in that process. Um, it's primarily there to be helpful and, and provide support. Awesome, cool. So um, then next up we have an update from our social media community. Uh, uh, before that, if I can just uh, just uh, throw something in here. Um, FOSDEM. 
uh, there has been some some exchange about this. So um, I don't know. I I was trying to evaluate if this is something that we want to attend. What kind of event is that? I think that is kind of generic open source event. But uh, yeah, but it's a very dirt under your fingernails kind of event, right? So. Uh, FOSDEM traditionally is an event that is really hardcore hacker. Um, and it's also a fairly large event. Uh, it's got about 8,000 people involved. Everybody, I've not been to FOSDEM personally, but everybody I've talked to who's ever been to FOSDEM has been super happy about the experience. It's, it's a pretty cool community. Um, so, you know, that, you know, and, and, and the, the folks who run the uh, SDN room there, the SDN and networking room, are actually interested in seeing network service mesh represented there. So they are interested in having some network service mesh talks. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the, yeah, it's the actually, the software-driven networking room is actually re who's reaching out to us. Okay. Yep. So, but I, I thank you for reminding me to add that. Um, yeah, just let's give it. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Anything else on events before we move on to social media? Awesome. So, Lucina, how is social media going this week? It was. It went really well. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, about ten more followers than we've been having per week. So, twenty-three more followers, and uh, followed almost forty more accounts, and tweeted, retweeted about thirty times. Um, was able to post a NSMCon lineup thread. So that was a 13 part thread. Oh, wow. I, yeah. <laughs> Posted links to every, every time bracket and as many of the speakers that had accounts. And that was well received. The speakers um, primarily liked and retweeted their, their reply or their topic. So that was good. Mm -hmm. And also posted on the five cool things at KubeCon, sent a second thanks again to the sponsors, and that was well received as well. And I also pinned that thanks again for the NSMCon sponsors to the top of our. That's a very account. good idea. Thank yes. you. <laughs> so that's the first thing people see when they go to end service mesh. And also posted a reminder of today's two calls and retweeted a few of the VMware open source blogs. Um, this week, the Telecom TV interview came out yesterday. I was out of office, so I'll take a look at that today and this week and promote the session at OSSEU. Reminder to register to NSMCon, promote the individual sessions and speakers at NSMCon. Outside of the thread, I'll do a spotlight on each speaker, maybe do two or three a day for the next couple of weeks, a week or two, and uh, promote, again, the session at KubeCon. We're almost at 500 followers for the Twitter account. So awesome. try to post something when that hits. Almost at 300 stars on the GitHub account. So post something when that hits. Fantastic. And I haven't seen a video of the ONS 5G panel. So if that exists, um, please be sure to ping mm -hmm. me if, I don't, if you see it before I do. I'd like to share that. And I think I already retweeted the O. ONS EU keynote, so I'll remove that one. And contributors podcast, is that available? This is tomorrow. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, so I don't know when it's gonna be rebroadcast, but we do have the, um, we do have it scheduled actually for tomorrow. Uh, but we have, we had the uh, uh, CNCF webinar. The webinar is actually uh, definitely out. We've been doing quite well, actually, on the viewership on that. Um, I can share that again if you'd like. Yeah, why not?
Yeah, so basically, uh, let me see what the viewership is like on the webinar at this point. Uh, we're at 608 views on the on the webinar video already in two weeks in, so we're doing quite well there. Awesome. So this is going well. Now, one other thing I did want to bring up, um, we also have a LinkedIn page for Network Service Mesh that we haven't really done much with. I'm curious if folks are interested in doing stuff with that. Um, I, I realized this because somebody actually posted a really nice post on LinkedIn about um, finally understanding what Network Service Mesh was about after the webinar. Um, and so it, and that actually got a huge amount of traction. So it occurred to me that LinkedIn might be an undiscovered country for us. But we can sort of figure that out as we go. I just wanted to throw out that, that that resource is out there. And if there are folks who are interested in working on it, I can definitely make the keys to that available to other folks as we expand our social media community. All right, awesome. Um, so next up is the announcements. I don't think we have any announcements this week. Um, so moving on, we do have an attempt to capture good beginner problems and we do have these fuzzing bugs. So if you're new to the community and you're just looking to get your first uh, commit into Network Service Mesh, I'd strongly recommend looking at these because they're pretty clear about what the issue is. Um, we're intentionally leaving them unresolved for the moment so that they, they can hang out as good beginner bugs. If need be, we'll probably just fix them going into the 0 0.2 release. Cool. Um, any other good beginner bugs that people are aware of they want to list here? All right, excellent. Um, status of the project. Um, so we've got a bunch of things that have landed this week. Um, you may recall for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about a shift in the API. Um, and in particular, we, we previously had had this split between the remote and the local API, and we brought them together into a, we were bringing them together into a unified API so that we have, you know, this vastly simplifies the world. <clears throat> And we talked about that for the last couple of weeks. There's a whole slide deck at the API discussion link if you want to go and review that conversation. And think it, what has landed this week is we had the breakup of it into three patches. The first was the API itself, um, which broke up the local and remote network service API and brought them together into a unified network service API. Um, the second is um, compatibility helpers. So basically, we wanted to make sure that we had some helpers that would convert things between the remote and local APIs and the new unified API. It turns out that was relatively simple and straightforward because the APIs are structurally almost identical. Um, but this is that patch is going to be super important if you're migrating any code that you have that doesn't exist in the network service mesh repo, because that's exactly where you're going to go and grab any compatibility helpers that you may want to apply. And then the third patch was applying those adapters throughout the code base. And again, if you're looking to adapt existing code to the, the unified API, this is also going to be uh, a super important patch to look at because it applies those adapters all up and down the code base. Um, and effectively, all it ends up doing is wrapping any servers and then applying a wrapper to any clients. So it's, it's a very structurally simple patch to, you know, thing to do. But again, if you're looking for a step-by-step, -step, this is how you do it, go look at that patch. It'll be super clear. Um, also landed this week, um, we migrated to using uh, GitHub package errors instead of just errors. The reason we did this, we migrated to using these everywhere in the code base because when you do an errors.new, it will capture the stack trace. Um, and also it allows you to wrap errors. So if you've got a returned error and you're going to return an error yourself with additional information, you can wrap the cause. And this ends up making the code enormously easier to debug as you're going through and trying to figure things out. And so we moved, made that movement um, and we also put in some very basic CI. So if you try and use just quote, quote, you know, open quote errors, close quote, rather than uh, GitHub package errors, the CI will complain to you. Um, and likewise, if you try and use uh, FMT format.errors instead of using errors.new um, or errors.errorf, um, then it will also complain to you in the CI, just to make sure we keep the, the, the motion consistent. Any questions on that? Cool. 
Um, other thing that we brought in this week is you may have been following the last few weeks. We had a, a shift in the build system to spill the build containers and oh my God, did it speed up build containers. Um, I don't know what fo other folks experiences have, have been. I would love to hear them. But for me on my local box, it took a cold build from 15 minutes down to a minute. Has anybody else had similar experiences? Yeah, from Russia, it's from half an hour to one minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm almost the very model of optimal build conditions over here. So, you know, I, 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 that, that, that's good. And then the, um, the other thing about, so we migrated to having the CI use that build containers, and we're now to the point where the CI is able to build all the containers in a single job in about a minute, um, which is really quite good. And then uh, finally, and landed this week, um, we didn't really have much testing the um, ICMP uh, kernel forwarder in the CI. And so I, I know Denise was mucking about with forwarder things and um, felt it was important that we not break the kernel forwarder and so contributed some Helm ICMP tests uh, to the CI for the kernel forwarder. So many thanks, Denise. Anyone else have anything they want to add that's landed this week? Okay, cool. Um, I somehow lost the line for in progress in here. Let me go put that back. Um, Okay, so in progress, this is stuff that's going on right now in the code base. So the API stuff continues. Um, now that everything is shifted over to the new API via adapters, there's some work afoot to adapt the SDK to use the unified APIs directly. That hasn't quite gotten together yet. In fact, it's currently failing all kinds of tests. Um, <clears throat> it should be pointed out if you are using the SDK, the SDK itself is using the adapters, so they should work with the new API just fine. But it would be good to root out the old split API and actually start natively using the unified API. So any, any questions on that as that's going on? I know there's a lot of movement on the API stuff. Is that is it clear to folks what's going on there? Does it, does it feel comfortable? Any sort of comments on that? No, nope, sounds good. Cool. And then, of course, once the uh, SDK has been adapted to using the unified APIs, we'll want to migrate the examples repo over to using the unified APIs. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, another thing in progress. So, Alex, do you want to talk about Azure pipelines? How well, they, they are progressing and now we have a nearly uh, successful, well, well, it's completely uh, workable. Uh, and uh, currently I'm thinking about moving it to the original repo from my fork repo and start to integrate it to, to the main repo. That's cool. Could you could you stick a link in here so that we can go take a look and see what Azure pipelines would look like? You could stick um, a link in the chat. Uh, I'm I'm on the phone now, so I'm not really comfortable with this. Okay, no, that that's completely fine. Um, could you so, just re repost the link I posted you today? Yep. Let me go grab that real quick. Hang on. Thank you. Yeah, I know it's it's crazy late for you guys over there. Um, let me go ahead and get this linked up and I will put it in the chat. Or actually I'll even I'll even do one better. I will put it on the meeting minutes. Um, cool. Excellent. <clears throat> so um 
if you could click on the example of the clean Azure run, just so folks can see it here on the call briefly. Did you mean this one? Yes. Okay, it's saying the requested build could not be found. Is this perhaps something that's not publicly visible yet, um, Alex? Yeah. It's possible that I don't have access. Yeah, that's one of the things we need to figure out because we do need people to, we need the general world to be able to follow the, the links and get access to their builds. So we will need to figure that out. Hmm. That's strange really. No, yes, I haven't seen that screen before. Ah, now, we, now I can see a screen and it shows the pipelines. Can we? Yep. Ah, this is not wrong. Probably a build ID. Hmm? I you, think uh, when we put it into a main repo, it should be fine. Build? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The no, second which build. of this? Uh, yeah, green just one. click green on the one. green one. Green one. This yeah. one. Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay, I may have just forked the link then. Um, <laughs> so you can see all this running here. And then you may want to go back to the builds and click on a red one just so you can see what an example of a failed job would look like, because that's in some ways failure, good failure is better, is more important than good success. So it basically says, okay, we've got the sanity check. Um, well, this is a debug, debug run, so it doesn't really helpful to introduce a failed we may pick up an even earlier build uh, to see uh, actually failed, uh, for example, cloud tests. Okay. So, but uh, effectively, um, I think though what we've basically got is we, we've, let me fix the link to in the meeting. Minutes. So we, we effectively, folks can go ahead and, and poke at this a little bit and see, um, I've now fixed the link in the meeting minutes, see what kind of what it would look like. Um, you know, Alex is trying to move us to a place where we can transition. One of the nice things about this is that the um, Azure Pipelines folks are donating a lot of time to CNCF. So that is very kind of them. Awesome. Shall we go back to the agenda? Cool. So there's a little bit of stuff um, as a work in progress on adding Go header linters. Do you want to talk about that, Denise? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, I've provided PR. Uh, also, I've provided a demo inside PR. So please take a look uh, and, and that's it. Yeah, the, the, the basic idea here being that, that we're not always great and I'm actually the worst um, about remembering to put license headers in our files. Um, and it, it's quite ironic that I'm the worst about this because I actually understand viscerally why it's actually super helpful to people downstream. And so the go header linter, as I understand it, would simply uh, fail the CI if you added a file and you did not add a, a license header to it. Um, just as a gentle reminder that you need to include your license headers. Um, so good housekeeping. Um, so. Andre, do you want to talk about the Network Service Mesh, the Network Service Manager SDK-like refactoring, which looks like it's getting very close? Yeah, it's very, very close. Uh, <laughs> at the moment, it's just one in stable test, uh, and it also could fail on master. So I mostly finish it, and I hope it will be landed this way. And it includes some additional improvements in different areas, like cloud testing tool uh, and the retrieving of the logs. So in general, should be very positive on a, um, stability because uh, during this refactoring, I found and fixed it, uh, few different issues uh, with the healing and with establishing of one connections with the monitoring of the remote and SMD, uh, re monitoring of the data plane and how events are passing uh, through the system. So in general, it should be more clear and more stable. Excellent. So that sounds great. Very cool. Yeah, I refactoring often, I, I find little bugs as I'm refactoring, so that makes total sense. Um, so Denise, do you want to chat a little bit about the Ethernet context issue? 
Oh, yes. Uh, on last week, uh, we faced this uh, bug related to DPP agent. Uh, bug was related to incorrect behavior with dump request. And we have updated VP agent uh, last week uh, and this new version dump request working fine. And I've continued to uh, work on this issue. That's all. Cool. Excellent. Uh, Radoslav, do you want to talk a little bit about the kernel forwarding plane? Um, sure, yeah. Uh, after merging the, the metric support, uh, basically I'm involved more on creating an example. Uh, for for a demo for the open source summit talk that we have with Ivana, so uh, yeah, in terms of features, there there are no more features developing <laughs> yep. at the time being. Yeah. Okay, so do keep an eye on things as all the refactoring is going by. I want to make sure that we don't destabilize the stuff you guys want to show um, at OSS summit. So do check and make sure that Master is is staying stable, and do also make sure that. Um, you know, any testing you want to get in to keep the stuff that you care about stable gets in as well. Because uh, if anything goes bump in the night, we want to get it fixed ASAP. Okay, sure. Um, so hopefully we won't have any of that, but but we all, we're all adults. We've all been through this before. We all know how the world works. So, cool. Um, then we've got an in-progress thing that you put together really quickly, Denise, for uh, renaming data playing to forwarder. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you were doing there? Oh, I just provided a uh, new uh, proto and uh, I just wait for uh, an SMS the like refactoring because uh, I need to change uh, the same code. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is actually a question and since we're in the phase of refactoring some API stuff, it makes sense. Uh, do we want to go ahead and do this rename of data plane to forwarder um, to match things? It will mean, for example, having to go fix examples because various downstream imports may shift, that kind of stuff. Um, my, my instinct is if, if we want to fix this now is probably the right time. Um, do other folks have thoughts? Oh, I think we can uh, provide, uh, I can provide two PRs, uh, one to NSM repo and another to example <laughs> repo. Yep. Do other folks have opinions or thoughts, particularly folks who are downstream working on things? <clears throat> Oh, I, I think I uh, it's better to do earlier than later if you do so dramatic uh, renamings and refactorings. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of agree with that. Um, just, yeah, if, uh, <laughs> just if there are some priority PRs that are waiting, maybe they can go first so that they will not need to be... Yeah, do you have do you have some that you have in mind in that regard? Um, um no, just saying. Okay. Yeah, because I mean <clears throat> do speak up if you've got a PR that you feel should go in with some priority. Um, because I I I would like to there are a couple things that I'd like to avoid. One is I don't want people to get stuck. And so just pipe up pop up on um, the Slack channel if you feel like you've got something that you think should go in with priority. The other one is I don't want people to get stuck in in sort of having to rebase and rebase and rebase. Um, so, you know, we'd like to avoid that as well. Uh, actually, I have uh, those two with the metrics observability, but I'll talk about them when we reach there, so. Okay, cool, cool. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, again, Denise, you've got some work going on with, to support multiple simultaneous Linux and forwarders? Oh, yes, uh, it is in progress. Uh, it is also depends on uh, the same as the kind of like refactoring. Okay. And, and this is, you know, we've had this issue up for a little bit of time talking about how to support multiply, multiple simultaneous forwarders. Um, we still have some interesting open questions about how you handle the order and priority. But I know you took a look at this, Radoslav, and other than the order and priority question, it looked good to you, correct? The, the suge suggestion for how to handle it? Yeah. yeah. So if you could keep an eye on the PR, because uh, what I'd like to be able to do is I, I want to make sure that we can deploy um, you know, both the kernel forwarder and the VPP agent forwarder at the same time. Um, I, 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 having sort of like hard configurable switching between them is less than optimal. Plus, um, as we start getting folks working on the hardware Linux solutions, those are also going to require uh, NSM forwarders. So, all right, cool. 
so uh, security. Um, Ilya, do you want to talk a little bit about the things in progress there? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, the first one, uh, it introduced tokens. I think we already discussed it last meeting. Uh, there are several comments after review. I think I can fix them in a while, but we also decided to merge it after an SM like SDK like an SM refactoring from Andre. And the second one is ready, just require rebase as far as I know. Okay. It yeah. will enable security in interdomain tests also. That, that's fabulous news. I'm glad that we've finally gotten that sorted. Um, cool. <clears throat> So Ivana, do you want to talk about metrics and observability? Uh, yes, uh, at the moment, uh, merging uh, Prometheus integration is blocked uh, because um, it first requires merging the uh, the other PR that exposes pod names uh, in the cross connect uh, because uh, Prometheus is using them. And the other PR is blocked by merging by the agent dependency issue that I'm trying to resolve for a couple of days. It's uh, breaking the CI. Um, and was this the VPP agent 2.3? Uh, it was, yes, with 3.3, uh, with 2.3, I have the same issue uh, as I had before. It's uh, when I uh, update with go generate all the mod files, uh, it, the CN infra is added there. And uh, then the make format is failing. Uh, I cannot reproduce locally. And if I, uh, it's failing by removing that file. And if I remove it, uh, go generate there uh, in the CI exit, and uh, then the diff from go generate fails, and it's an uh, infinite circle. I tried a lot of workarounds, uh, still, still didn't find a solution. Okay. Are you having oh. this issue? Is this an issue you're having on sixteen thirteen, or is this an issue you're uh, having? On I, I always forgot which one which is. So let me check. Apologies, I, I I had originally added your PRs back before I just started copying and pasting. The... Uh, no, it's the the Prometheus, so it should be uh, here. Sixteen thirteen, or yeah, I think it should be sixteen thirteen. Okay. So reach, yeah, out of, yeah, yeah. reach out over over Slack and let's let's see if we can get you on stock. Because uh, I, I the, the very few things actually bug me, but the thing that one thing that does bug me is people being stuck. So I try and figure out how to get them on stock. Okay, okay. I I think I've uh, reached out last week and uh, but uh, we couldn't find any solution. Discuss the update of two dot three. Uh, but uh, still, we didn't have, so I'll try to. I'll continue okay, no, that, and reach out again. That's good. That's so, good. so this I, PR is blocking this one because you know, the yep. Prometheus needs this merged. Yep, no, I, I totally get that. And I want to make sure we get you guys unblocked because you've got cool things you want to show off here shortly. So, um, yeah, let's definitely follow up with that on Slack and we'll go ahead and, and figure out what, 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 if anything, can be done there because I'm very excited to get the metrics and observability going. Cool, so um, on SRV6 support. Um, so this is stuff that Artem is working on. Uh, I think Artem is currently on vacation, uh, which is good. It's good for people to take a little time off. Um, and the um, BPP fix that we needed for SRV6 has finally gone in upstream. And so I'm currently talking with the BPP agent guys about getting a stable respin that includes that fix in BPP agent. And so hopefully once we get there, we'll be able to um, get SRV6 support working. So cool. Anything else in terms of in progress uh, that folks want to discuss? All right, cool. Uh, anything else that folks would like to discuss that isn't on the agenda? Uh, I see Wayne here. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, yeah, hello. Hey, how's it guys, how are you? Hey, Ed. Welcome Wayne, welcome to the community. Thanks man, I've been trying to 
I make the cruise meetings, but been tied up with um, some other stuff lately. So, um, yeah, I kind of just barged my way in, in here and uh, start chatting to you guys. So I'm trying to help out. I'm actually looking at some of those those PRs to fix those first issues. The moment, so. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, do let us know how that goes. We're, we're, we're trying to make uh, beginner-friendly uh, issues, and, and those with the linter, with the, the fuzzing, tend to be good for that. The other thing is that the kind gentleman from the fuzzing community who came and started fuzzing things, I think once those start getting fixed, he'll get enthusiastic again and start fuzzing more stuff. Um, okay, you, cool. And, and feel free to reach out over Slack, uh, you know, or talk there or here or wherever about kind of what brings you to the community, what you're interested in. Because yeah. my experience has been that, you know, it is absolutely God's work to roll up your sleeves and help with things like fuzzing bugs and, you know, documentation and that's much appreciated. But getting people lined up with stuff they're passionate about and to be the long-term sustainable path. So figuring out what really excites you here is going to be very helpful. Cool. Yeah, so, I mean, I uh, don't write a lot of Go. We mainly uh, Elixir and Python shops, so there's a bit of a learning curve there. So just bear, bear with me, but we're keen to, and my engineering team as well is keen to help. Oh, that's, so. that's fantastic. The, the suggestion I would make there is don't hesitate to ask questions on Slack because okay. there, there's, there's a lot of situations where um, it could take days to figure something out, and if you just ask, someone can point you to exactly the answer in two minutes. Um, cool. Go, Go is an excessively pleasant and logical language, but it does have a, a few nits in it that, that you got to wrap your head around. Yeah, like anyway. for sure. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, when uh, you you send me a question about enabling, I'm sorry for not answering. It was just crazy. No in problem. A couple of days. Uh, so maybe maybe you can post this uh, in the NSM Dev channel, uh, so okay. that. Uh, you, you get like because it's more or less a VPP, uh, VPP CTO command that needs to be executed there. But probably people will be able to answer more accurate than me. There. Okay, no problem. I've just got like I've got another use case, and I know um, Edgy love use cases. So one of our things is um, we connect uh, via VPN into the telcos in Africa. And what we're trying to do is instead of having outbound based VPN like in your secure internet. Um, example, we want inbound <laughs> VPN, right, where we dial, we, we, we init in the connection into um, the telco, and then we use it as a pipe to then shape and have echoes on in the, in the CNFs as, as, as we push traffic through the, the pods. So yeah, it's the okay. reverse of that. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So you, you're essentially running the reverse of Sarah's yeah. story. Um, exactly, yeah, exactly. Okay. Cool. No, that's, that's awesome. And, and feel free to, to, again, happy to chat on all the stuff on Slack. Um, you know, to communicate. Um, I don't know what time zone you're in, um, but we do have a lot of folks who are active in your time, plus a lot of the folks in North America like me get up early. Okay. Yeah, I'm GMT plus two. So, and I'll send you guys a, a, a picture of the of of the um, of the use case, and maybe we can have, use that as a discussion point about how to build it. Perfect. Excellent. Cool. All right. But, okay. All right. Talk to you later. Anything else, Thanks, guys? guys. Sure. Otherwise, I'm inclined to yield back the time. And if, but if folks have something else they want to discuss, this is absolutely the time for it. Um. Roslav, do you want to share, because we have some time here, do you want to share the the, 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 the picture that you're trying to implement? I think that Taylor might be interested. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, let me just try to, to share my screen. Um, yeah, um, basically I'm trying to, to recreate the, the network topology of a 4G network. I'm not seeing a share just yet. Um, yeah, just trying to find it. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> as, as long as you didn't think you were sharing, we're all good. No. <laughs> uh, so, is it showing? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, um, basically this is the topology of the network that I'm trying to recreate with uh, network service mesh. So I 
I'm basically recreating the the picture that is widely available in the internet, but I'm using the NSM concept. So, yeah, you can see I have uh, I have chosen some of the blocks to be endpoints. Some of them are clients. Um, the idea is to have a single client and a single endpoint, and uh, not have a, uh, a a point that is uh, both a client and an endpoint. So um, it was successful actually until I rebased the latest master. <laughs> so I oh, oh my! So to do ping me on Slack about that because if 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 I, I want to make sure we get that cleaned up, um, you it may just be that you need to use the adapters if you rebase this morning, for example. You may yeah, just need yeah, to, yeah. Yeah. So so ping me. We'll get you hooked up with the adapters, and that should fix you. Um, plus, as soon as I can, as soon as I land the. Um, the native API stuff in the SDK, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, shift over examples as well. So, um, but I, I'm, I'm delighted that you've gotten this working. That's actually really exciting. Um, yeah, uh, basically it's just a, a skeleton of this picture uh, for, the, for the images of that, of those blocks I'm using, the Opine images. So it's, it's, a, it's up to whoever tries to implement that to change the images. Mm -hmm. But the clients and the endpoints are configured to to create those net this network topology. No, that that's that's actually very exciting, and it also sounds to me like a potential solution for, for um, North America, which is probably. Yeah, so Sorry, there is some background noise. Someone. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it, it, that's exciting. It's also probably a really good talk proposal for something like ONS North America, um, which is opening at CFP soon. So. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully also. Uh, oh, you, you you want to see excited telco operators coming in and saying, "Here's the skeleton of your 4G with network service mesh." That's exciting. Uh, so, Taylor, this is also partially uh, meant to help with uh, the CNF testbed and the, the the idea about you know having uh, something to be demoed based on the packet towers and etc. So uh, what we wanted to, to actually show here is how you can use network service mesh to interconnect all those boxes. We don't have the content of the boxes yet because we are not that deep into the telco stuff. But we assume that if someone capable of understanding how uh, the uh, open air interface or some of the other open source projects that do implement these things uh, can, you know, take over, then, then they can feel the, the, the right services inside and uh, and put uh, put the things in place, but this is like just saying, yeah, if you wanted to enable uh, these uh, solutions based on NSM, this is how you would do it. So that's uh, more or less uh, the, the the idea here. That's great. Uh, this I'm interested in following up, and and we can see um, maybe how we could actually implement this. Uh, on the packet locations with the Sprint 5G connectivity. Yep, so this, mm -hmm. is, this is very, very good. This, this diagram is, is really exciting for me as well. So, because this is some of the stuff we're trying to do around the PCRF and the packet gateway. Cool. Uh, okay, I didn't uh, saw who, who said that, but... Uh, that was great. Okay, uh, so if we if you have anything that that is open source and can fill some of these boxes with some real content, we'd be we'd be glad to to, to work further and try to put something together that that can be you know uh, can do some real work, not not just you know uh, having pings back and forth <laughs> between boxes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Cool. That's awesome. Anything else folks want to talk about before we conclude? Yeah, and, and by the way, uh, Radoslav, don't be shy about putting things like that on the agenda. That would have been dead center of in progress from my point of view. Oh, I was, uh, I was actually disappointed that it broke just before the meeting. So. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry. Uh -oh. <laughs> 
like I said, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, it's just a simple matter of uh, grab the adapters and away you go. Uh, there's a, literally an SDK compat now. Um, and, and so if you go look at the PRs that are actually in the meeting minutes, the one about how to apply them is probably going to be super instructive. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. All right, cool. Anything else? All right. Talk to you guys later. Yeah. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Cheers.